Um, so anyway, thank you very much. As I said, we're going to you know, talk you how to build a better business plan. As Kathleen says, I review with the Bell Fund in my, in my capacity on the strategic side, a lot of the digital media projects that come in. We're probably averaging about 40 or 50 every quarter that we're involved in reviewing. Um, so I've seen a lot over the years. I've been work consulting them for about three years, four years now, wow. So it's somewhere, I would say, close to 500 that I've seen to date. Um, I also, my day job is actually running my own business, which is in itself a midlife career crisis. Before I got involved in healthcare, um, as most people do, I actually spent um, 25 years producing film and television. So really what I want to do here is building a better business plan. Many of you have sort of seen a lot, lot of uh, templates on how to put pl business plans together. Again, Andrew had a terrific overview on how to do it. So I'm going to spend about 30 seconds on that and then sort of go to what I think are sort of helpful in terms of really getting to the nuts and bolts of getting the information for the business plan to bring it down to that 25 pages and wow everybody. So again, as you've sort of seen, what does a business plan look like? Really nuts and bolts. You have a table of contents, an executive summary, company description, products and services, key members, financial plan, as sort of as an overview of the kinds of things that you should have in there. Um, as I said, I've reviewed a lot, and I'm in the process now of actually going through my own funding rounds in my own company, so if I had forgotten it, it's right in there to know exactly what we've got to keep on doing and to get it out there. And again, as Andrew said, you've got to be succinct. If you're going out there and you start rambling on, even your document is too long, they're saying, why can't they just summarize this for us and get to the, to the meat of it? It becomes suspect when it's too long, as much as if it's too short. So you really want to be drilled through and get, get it clear, and that's what we're going to talk about a lot. On the company description, which is really the meat of the pieces that they're looking for, you know, what is the mission statement, your goals and objectives, what is your philosophy, what is he really trying to do, what are you trying to answer, uh, who's the target market, what's the status, of the industry itself. Is it a static industry? Is it a growth industry? Is it an emerging industry? Or is it a changing industry? You know, my favorite example is toothpaste. For a long time, it was just toothpaste, Colgate, you know, Crest, or Sensodyne, or whatever the case may be. Then Arm & Hammer came up, put a baking soda in there. And said, well, that's kind of interesting. And then all of a sudden, it was an explosion of, there's nothing but shelves and shelves of different kinds of toothpaste. It went from a very static industry to a uh, in, uh, marketplace to a very exciting and innovative one. Now whether there's any real difference between the toothpaste is almost irrelevant to the marketing side of it, but people think they're different. And it became a very explosive industry. Um, the SWOT analysis, which again is what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are the opportunities, what are the threats to your industry. Again, summarizing it so you can see it in a nutshell, what are all these various pieces to understand. And at the end of the day, what's the factors to success? What are the factors in the industry why companies are successful and why are you going to be successful? So it's important to have a real understanding of all these pieces and to get it across in your, in your business plan so it's good for you and good for anybody else who's coming in to take a look at it. It's okay, this is great, but how do you get to all this? And that's, if I've learned anything over a few years, it's, it's getting to this is really the, the real challenge and the, really what defines the companies to sort of see what they really, if they really understand their business and their, their product and the industry that they're in. So the key elements to, plan, to the planning, research. Second one is research, third is research. You've really got to know what you're getting yourself into. Um, and you really can't do that enough. And we'll be talking about that more, but it's really, what is it that you're doing? What is it you're answering? And it's not a matter of, let's see, well, I'm just going to do this, and you sort of think about yourself or amongst your friends. It really is going out and you know, going to the libraries, going online really sussing out what it is that you're getting involved in. Because you're going to be asked um, by people you're looking for money from, you're going to be asked by accountants, you're going to be asked by your own employees, you're going to be asked by clients. You know, they're going to be asking you a lot of questions and you have to have those answers and really understand solidly what you have. And that in itself, and you'll sort of see, that evolves and changes over time. You know, using the example of my mobile health, when I you know, came up with this, the idea, I was just like, man, this is just brilliant. He said, it's never going to change. I've got it locked down there. And the one thing that's happened is every bloody time we do one of these SWOT analyses, it thing changes. The, con the basic element of it is the same, but how we go about doing it, how we go about selling it, and Andrew had a great piece, and I apologize, I can't remember this, the part in your slide, where it sort of re is changing the message, I think is what you talked about. And that's really crucial for these things. You only find out about that is when you do your research. And, understand, and really understand where you're going with it. Um, part of the thing is the business idea product actually work. 
again, it's great on paper, but is what you really want to do, does it work? Do you know it works? How do you know it works? You know, have you done a proof of concept? Is it something that you've already seen out there? Are you emulating something that exists? But again, that it's, it's really coming down to the very basic thing, does this thing work? And I'm, you know, and I'm going to use for illustration just the mobile health, because I said it was my midlife career crisis, so it's sort of, it's embedded in my mind. When I came up with the idea, I thought it was a brilliant idea, as I said. Went around talking to everybody. Everyone said, oh, what a cool idea. And all that ever happened to me is I used to have a lot more hair. It was just patting me on the head on these great ideas, and I got bald. But they said, well, that's a nice idea, but no one's doing it at the time. I said, well, does it work? And they said, well, of course it's going to work. But it got to the point when I read, you know what? I better make sure this damn thing works. So you've got to go through the process and can make sure your idea or your product, whatever the case may be, actually can do what you say it's going to do. And people are going to go, show me. Um, third party validation. Um, it's amazing the value that that has. And in, in terms of, it's fine for me to say how great something is, or for you to say how great what you want to do is, but who else is saying it? And not necessarily say, and, and, not, and it could be a matter of there's you know, research papers or you read articles, people saying this is going to be great. But it's also who else is out there confirming it? You know, are there, do you have advisors? You know, one thing I, I brought on board as I was going out there, I was very fortunate to have really interesting advisors come on board who are thought leaders in the industry. And they came on board and they became an affirmation that helped other people understand, but also helped give me direction to make sure what I'm doing made sense. You know, are there thought leaders out there? Professionals, you know, some lawyers, accountants, whoever out there who have their own perspective on things. Um, and may not be the same as yours, but they're going to provide you insight to be able to make this thing make more sense and have some validation. There's also professional validation. Um, healthcare, again, as I learned, if I knew then what I know now, I'd probably be working in a tire factory, is the time it takes for certain things to happen. Healthcare in particular takes a long time, and healthcare IT even longer to put these things together. You know, this idea, in terms of for, for LifeWire, what I'm doing, the idea hit me one evening having too much Pinot Grigio uh, about eight years ago. And it's gone through the process. We're going through patent process. We're going through everything. We finally, this year, at the end of this year, just got our first peer-reviewed study done. And we got our FDA validation, the first one in that category. But it took eight years. And everyone's going, man, that was fast. But, and the reason we did that is because for what we're doing, we needed that validation. Even though we had anecdotally, this is great, it does everything it's supposed to do, we've had the studies, we have clients, it all came back to, well, why you versus somebody else? So these validation pieces for whatever business or area you're in becomes very important. So you've got to be aware of what those are to make sure you have it before you start. Again, the same thing in digital media in terms of validation of you're putting a platform together, you're putting a gaming piece together. How do you know these pieces are going to work and make sure it's validated other people are using it?